Hello everyone, I am here at the Bible study. I hope you guys are having a good night. Um, tonight we are going to be in the book of Matthew. We are going to be reading Matthew chapter 18. Last night we actually did Matthew chapter 8. Tonight is Matthew chapter 18, which we will be going over reading the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, the parable of the lost sheep, the brother who sins against you, the parable of the unmerciful servant, and that is it for chapter 18. And the devotion tonight is by a new writer, Katie Minster, Minter, sorry, Katie Minter Jones. And the verse that goes along with her devotion tonight is Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, which says, Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. And that was spoken by Jesus. So you know it's true. Okay, and I've got a special surprise for you guys after the Bible reading. So let's go ahead and get started with the uh, reading here in chapter 18. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand among them. Jesus loved the little children. Remember uh, Jesus telling them when they tried to shoo the children away when they were coming to him? He told them not to do that. So, you know, he loved the little children. He called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you, I tell you the truth. Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. I say that so many times. And he said, I tell you the truth. Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Because children are innocent, and all they know is love. All they know is love. They don't know hate. They're not born hating. They're taught hate. They learn hate. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. But if anyone causes one of these little ones who believes in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. Jesus don't like people being mean to children. They will pay for their sins. Best believe that they will get justice. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to sin. Such things must come, but woe to that man through whom they come. If your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. See that you do not look down on one of these little ones. For I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. See, Jesus is talking about the children again. He said, see that you do not look down on one of these little ones, on these little children. For I tell you that their angels, their guardian angels, the children's guardian angels. For I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, Will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go to look for that one that wandered off? 
And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should be lost. If your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault just between the two of you. If he listens to you, you have won your brother over. But if he not, if he will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. I tell you the truth, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there am I with you. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began to settle it, a man who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. I like, I like this one really well. The parable of the unmerciful servant. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. See, he's like, him and his wife, kids, everything he has, sell them. Give me my money. He didn't think nothing of it. He didn't care about selling them, but... He must have been a good man because the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. When that servant fell to his knees and begged him, he had compassion for him just like Jesus would. Just like Jesus shows compassion, we are supposed to show compassion to one another. And that's what this man did. Showed compassion and gave this man everything he was going to lose back, his whole family, his whole life, and canceled the debt of 10,000 talents that he owed him. He's just like, forget the debt altogether, and you and your family go home. You owe me nothing. That's a good person. But when, now watch, would, would this servant do the same for someone else? Would he go out and um, would it pay it forward? Would he pay it forward? Let's see. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, which is not much. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Mean, mean man. Began to choke him. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. And that was just for a hundred denarii. denarii. And that's not much at all, not compared to uh, 10,000 talents. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. And what do you think that master or that servant's going to say after he showed him so much compassion? 
he should have showed compassion to his fellow brother. But he didn't. He didn't. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. 10,000 talents now. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. And that's the end of chapter 18. It's about, you know, if you're mad at somebody and somebody's mad at you and somebody forgives you for doing something bad to them, Shouldn't you forgive the person that you're mad at who's done something wrong to you? It's the same thing as this. It really is. You don't want to keep hating. You never know when your time is going to be up. You really don't. No matter how old you are, you don't know. I have had... I've had a few cousins that were young get killed in accidents through the years, riding bikes and things. Young, like 12, 13, got killed out riding their bicycles. My brother died when he was three days old. Didn't even make it out of the hospital. My cousin died of cancer when she was in her 30s perfectly healthy and fit, worked out all the time, had a wonderful job, beautiful, had a nice home, she was so happy. You never know what's going to happen. You never know. Somebody could break in and murder, murder you. I hate to say it, but it's true. You could have a heart attack. Anything could happen. Anything. So if you don't have, if you don't fight, just please don't fight. And if you are fighting, do your best to make up with each other. Because you never know when it might be your last word to that person. And you don't want it to be something you'll regret for the rest of your life. Okay, so let's read the devotion by Kate Mentor Jones. I heard heart-wrenching sobs as I walked down the hospital hallway. Oh, this is going to be sad. I hope I don't start crying with this makeup on. A distraught mother sat alone in the waiting room crying and calling out to Jesus. I knew who she was. I was a pharmacy technician and had just been to her son's room to get his orders. I cringed when I flipped through his chart. Diagnosis, alcohol overdose, condition critical. Oh, I had to destroy his liver. He lay deathly ill amid tubes, wires, catheters, and monitors in the ICU. Now as I passed by and heard the mom's cries, I knew that I should go pray with her, but I was too upset. I felt guilty. That could be me. My twin sons were the same age as her boy. I should have offered to pray with her. Dear Jesus, please heal him. Give me the words to comfort his mother. During lunch, I went to her despite my anxiety. I have sons the same age as your son. May I pray with you? She nodded, her eyes glassy with tears. We held hands, prayed, and asked for a miracle. When she was summoned to the consultation room to meet with the doctor, she asked me to come along. 
Suddenly, everything had changed. The doctor's words were life-giving. Jesus performed a miracle. He has no permanent damage. The power of Jesus was palpable. The prayers of two mothers were answered. Where two or three come together in my name, there I will be also. Remember, Jesus says that if two or three of us agree in prayer, his Father will do what we ask. Prayer is an invitation to see him work in amazing ways. When we pray together, our prayers usher in his presence. Amen. And the homework tonight is very simple. If you need a miracle today, find a prayer partner and pray. Okay, guys. Um, I thought I'd do something different for you tonight. I have this book here. I've been reading stories online, doing videos, videos of these, but I thought I would give you guys a sample of one of the stories. You should look this woman up on YouTube if you'd like to listen to her, the stories she tells. She's a hospice nurse, or used to be a hospice nurse for many, many years. Her name is Trudy Harris. She was an RN. What, she seems like a wonderful woman. And she tells some of the most amazing stories because you, when people are dying, they see things and everything. And it's just amazing the stories she has from the experiences people's had. But this is more glimpses of heaven. And when we get done with this book, I have one over there about uh, life and life after death or something like that. But I'll give you a sample. This one is told by Trudy Harris. Um, some of the other stories are told by different nurses and things, people. But this one is called, they're just, um, all the stories are just a person's name. A person that they have worked with through hospice that has passed away. And this person's name is Alex. I am ready to meet my commander now. Alex had been a lifelong Navy man. He lived and breathed Navy life and service to his God and country. He conducted his entire life with discipline and commitment. It was no different now. Alex had inoperable cancer of the lung, and although at 66 he looked remarkably well, he was dying quickly. He accepted his terminal diagnosis as I am sure he accepted everything in life, with strength and grace, dealing with every challenge with the stockism and calm reflective of his naval discipline and his faith. Alex's family was a Navy family through and through. Sons had joined just as their father and grandfather had done before them. In addition, as tough and disciplined as they were, they admired, respected, and loved their father with great affection and without embarrassment. It was wonderful to see. Taking turns with their wives and children, they helped to care for the father, who had loved them all well and taught them to be committed Christian husbands, fathers, and Navy men. His wife relived now of some of Alex's day-to-day -day care was able to offer her tender, loving presence to Alex in ways that were meaningful to both of them, sitting quietly together on the patio, taking a short walk, or sharing morning and evening prayer meant everything to them. They loved each other deeply. Each day, things got a little harder for Alex to do, getting out of bed, bathing himself, even with help and walking any distance took all of his energy now. Eating was difficult and began to take more and more out of him. Alex began to talk openly about going to heaven, to the God he loved and served all his life. It will be time to meet my commander soon, he said, more than once. 
and he seemed to be preparing on many levels to do just that in the very near future. A hurried call in the middle of the night sent me flying to their room at about 3 a.m. He wants to have a shower and shave now, his wife explained. He wants to get dressed in his navy blues and he wants us to help him. Apparently, Alex, in his many conversation with God, had gotten the clear message that it was time to go to his home in heaven and pre present himself to his commander. There was no way to talk him into delaying this until morning. He wanted to do it now, and no amount of conversation was going to change his mind. Persuading his sons to take him into the shower, shave him, and dress him took enormous determination on Alec's part, but he did not waver, even for a moment. He gathered everything together as he directed, and the bathroom door closed behind him and his two sons. When the door finally opened about 30 minutes later, Alex stood with his son's assistance in his best navy dress, blues, smiling from ear to ear. With Alex's encouragement, his sons helped him sit up straight in his king-size bed with pillows at his back and his officer's cap beside him. Then he looked at all of them and smiled. I am ready to meet my commander now, whenever he is ready for me. There was not a shred of doubt in anyone's mind that when he died, that when he did, God would say to him, Welcome, my good and faithful servant. See what I have prepared for you from the beginning of time. You have loved me well. Alex died a few hours later, proudly surrounded by his family and loved ones, dressed in the uniform of his beloved country, which he had served for a lifetime. He entered heaven. I was reminded the entire time of the scripture in which the centurion asked Jesus to heal his servant. The centurion tells Jesus that he too is a man under authority and Jesus sees his great faith and rewards him. Alex saw himself as the centurion did, under authority and ready to meet his supreme commander. And he did. So that's just a sample of one of the stories. So if you guys like them, I put videos of them online sometimes. So that's what one of them is like, in case you wonder. They're, they're just by people's names. If you see a name on there, that's just one of these stories. But I hope you guys liked everything for the Bible study tonight. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and hopefully I'll see you guys again soon with another Bible study. Bye, guys. Good night.